So the first thing we're going to look at in our first tutorial is to see how to create a professional sounding kick drum sample. Now in order for, to have a kind of credible trance track you do really need a very very powerful kick drum and akin to the sort of professional sample libraries you can buy. But we're going to look at how to actually create a kick sample that is as good if not better than a professional one as well. So we can see that the peak level it's fully normalized at zero uh, dB full scale. And we can hear that the kick drum is very, very punchy. We can see in the waveform it's very, very fat looking. And that's a highly compressed kick sample. But very professional and pretty much what you need in order to create a proper club track. Now, if we look at the internal samples that you get in some doors, we're going to just look at some logic ones here. They're pretty uninspiring by comparison. The level isn't quite peaking uh, at 0 dB full scale, but even so, we can just tell by the tone. Here's the one from Native Instruments Battery, Rob Pappen's Punch, here as well, that they aren't anywhere near as powerful sounding as that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to create something like that from those three together. So I've started off here by rendering the audio samples here. So we'll just solo them and hear them now that they've been normalized. Normalized to minus 3 dB. And the only one that kind of comes anywhere near it is the Rob Puff and Punch one. So what we'll do is we'll look for the qualities of these samples and see what they entail. So that sample actually has quite a nice initial transient. If we look at the waveform here, we can probably cut it down in size a touch and take that initial transient. The second one has got a nice amount of bass and quite a good click as well. We'll probably use more of the click of that sound and use the bass from Punch. That's got quite a good amount of uh, bass in there, but we'll also use a sine wave to really fill out that bottom end. I'll just mute that for a second. So first thing I'm going to do is add some EQ to this and roll off all of the bass. And just push the treble slightly as well. I'm just going to make that a more focused bell curve. Boosting EQ, it's generally better to use a broader Q and when you're cutting use a narrow one. So we'll to make a nice wide one there. We'll just nip the size of that sample down as well. So it's a very short attack sound and just change the envelope there. And we've done the same one here with this as well. So I'm going to add a transient shaper to this as well just to reinforce that high treble and we're going to use the snap pull down the thump and roll up the sensitivity we'll just pull the output there so it's not clipping so that's sounding a bit better now Next, we're going to add a transient shaper to this one as well. And we'll take the thump down slightly because we mainly want to use the snap. Turn the sensitivity up a touch and probably pull the output. So you can hear how we're de-emphasizing some of the low end and 
emphasizing some of that click and that attack in the snap section here and taking off the thump which basically means the low end and the high end transient you can use any transient shaper but that's the one I'm using here and for this one we probably don't need too much done to it let's see how these work in tandem bring up the mixer here for a second Now those two should probably be sounding a bit louder when they're combined. So the phase is probably inverted on one of the samples. So with the Rob Pappen one, I'll just flip the phase of that. And you can just hear the tone changing in that bottom end. Some of the bass coming back into it because there's sort of destructive interferences. One is uh, the start of the wave cycle on here is going from uh, zero to positive, and this one's going from zero to negative. When you combine those two, they sort of cancel each other out slightly. So what we've done is we've flipped the phase and we've turned that to positive and that to positive as well. So they're both now locked in phase and you don't get that sort of low end phase cancellation, which can sometimes happen when you combine kick samples together. So now we'll add in all three of them. Apart from the fact they're clipping on the output there, we can hear that they're already starting to sound much more punching. So we'll just pull these down a touch. We'll start with this one about here. Blend in this second one. What we'll do now is we're going to dial in some parallel compression. And we'll go and look at this aux channel that I've created on Boss 2. We'll turn on this compressor. We'll hear that biting down. It's not a very nice sound on its own. We're compressing by a heavy amount there. Some makeup gain on there. Got some soft clip distortion as well for the output. But we're using a high ratio, relatively quick attack time, but not too quick. So we only reinforce the bass. We want to reinforce some of the snap and the bite as well. So we're going to let through some of that initial attack sound before we clamp down on it. Make the release nice and long. Extremely high ratio, extremely low threshold and it makes sure that your compressor is in peak mode, not RMS. And now we can hear the effect of that parallel compression a lot more without any distortion side effects. So if those all go into there, that's starting to sound nice. We'll now unmute this sine wave and turn on the gate uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this sine wave and have it keyed to the kick drum, our main one, which is our Rob Papp and Punch, really. And we're going to send that to bus one and make sure the output's turned off so we can't hear that signal. But we're just using it to control the gate for the sine wave. Now we're really adding some nice sub bass into our sound. We'll also send that to our parallel compressor as well. And now hopefully with all of them together, we end up with quite a good kick drum sound. Let's make that 
not hold for quite as long. Turn the attack down as well now. And finally, we will just add in some limiting as well to really bring that overall level up with some brick wall limiting. You see that's not quite clipping. It's just a quite healthy level there. And we'll put the ceiling, our brick wall ceiling at 0 0.3 of a decibel. We can be fairly heavy handed with this until the gain reduction meter is starting to come in. If we put it like there, it's a bit too much, a bit too forceful. But anywhere up to there, really will fan it out. Leave it there, just roll it back off a touch. Because we don't want to squash and compress it too much because this sample, once it's rendered, will actually be used as part of a track, which will then probably have some more compression. Certainly at the mastering level, it might even be sent to a, a drum submix or even have some, some uh, insert processing as well with some compression and EQ. So we want to make sure there is still a little bit of life left in it and a little bit of room for, for manoeuvre when it gets used in its final guise. So now if we just bounce this out, we get a 16 bit, bit WAV, which is fine for dance music. Don't really need to worry about it being 24 bit. And we'll call it DIY kick sample. We'll drag this in into here to a new track. And we can see that it's very close in terms of level already with that. But we will just shorten down the sample there. We'll listen to this in isolation. We'll compare it to a professional sample. Logic's internal samples. Battery's internal samples. Or Pappen's Punch, which is pretty good actually. And then our DIY composite one. Coming in just a bit quieter, actually, technically, than the others by a negligible amount. And that's how it's done.